Putin will win if the West and Ukraine do not implement a new strategy, Bloomberg. Ukraine's allies need to radically rethink their approach to defense assistance to Kiev, columnist Mark Champion writes in a Bloomberg column. Putin greatly underestimated Ukraine and the West two years ago, and he has adapted and will win if both the West and Ukraine fail to develop and implement a new strategy, the author noted. He believes the US presidential election in November could lead to sweeping changes in Washington, making it even more important to have clear policies and a viable strategy. The columnist called it a mess, not a strategy, that it took the Biden administration more than two years to openly declare its desire for Ukraine to win the war. It took just as long to seriously talk about what to do with some $300 billion in frozen Russian assets or to approve the sending of the long-range ATA CMS missiles and F-16s that Ukraine so obviously needs. Even now, debate continues over whether Ukraine will be able to use these weapons to strike targets in Russia is a mess, not a strategy that was understandable at the beginning of the war, but is now unforgivable. According to the author, at the upcoming meeting to mark NATO's 75th anniversary in July, leaders should use this opportunity to decisively rethink Ukraine's defense. They must set victory as a goal, define the parameters of what it means, and explain how they plan to achieve it. Then and only then can the promise of as long as it takes be replaced with whatever it takes. The author also believes that a clearer explanation of the consequences of Russia's victory in Ukraine would be a good starting point. It is necessary to convince that Putin's invasion has radically changed the rules of US-China competition. In addition, the columnist advises to stop justifying support for Ukraine by defending liberal democracy. By helping Ukraine, NATO is defending the fundamental defense of the UN against countries that change their borders by force. This principle is also valued by the vast majority of leaders in Africa, the Middle East, first of all. This is a war to maintain the integrity of borders and prevent further wars. Ukraine's allies should clearly announce this at the July NATO summit and perhaps even invite a few autocrats to help drive home the message. Attacks against the Russian city of Belgorod and settlements in Belgorod Oblast on May 25th damaged multiple buildings, vehicles, and a gas supply line, Governor Vyacheslav Gladkov claimed. Reports of aerial attacks against Belgorod Oblast, which borders Ukraine's Sumy, Kharkiv, and Luhansk oblasts, have become a common occurrence in recent months. Russian air defense units shot down 29 targets over the course of the day, Gladkov reported. According to him, four people died and 12 were injured as a result of the strikes of the Ukrainian army. As a result of the strikes, dry grass in a large area around the city, fire broke out in 13 private houses in the city, six cars were damaged, a residential building, a bathhouse and several buildings were partially destroyed. According to Gladkov, attacks against the city of Belgorod caused severe damage to two apartment buildings and shattered windows in ten others. He also said that the attacks damaged two schools, three commercial properties, and several cars. In the village of Dubov in Belgorod Oblast, a direct hit to a townhouse caused a fire that spread to two neighboring townhouses, Gladkov claimed. He also said that attacks in the village of Shebakino damaged multiple apartment buildings and a local gas line. Emergency workers are at the site working to restore the gas supply line, he said. Ну, пусть, ну, пусть, ну, пусть.